But instead of looking at values of this guy, I'm looking at the same points, and I'm looking at the values of this guy. And you could quickly just substitute some in just to prove to yourself my numbers are not made up. If you put in x equals 1, x equals 1, you get 6 times 1 minus 12, which is negative 6. And you can see my negative 6 right there. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so this is what the second derivative looks like. But what does it tell us? First derivative tells us, are you increasing or decreasing or stationary? What does this tell us? What are you thinking, Mo? So it's the rate of change of the actual rate of change. So mm -hmm. basically, it's, if you graph it, it's a straight line. So yeah, this is a straight line. This is a linear function, isn't it? In fact, if I graphed it, it looks something like it goes straight through here is where it would pass through. Okay? Tavali, were you going to say something similar or different? But didn't I tell you like after like the stationary point that the graph goes positive or negative? Hmm. hmm. Can you say that again? After the stationary point, it tells you what? Whether the graph goes like up or down. Whether the graph goes up or down. Okay, so I'm interested in unpacking what you mean. Maybe, and this actually would be helpful to put onto your graph, right? Go ahead, take these numbers, pop them onto roughly where they should belong onto yours. I'm going to highlight, just like I did with the first derivative, the places where our graph has a negative second derivative and the places where it has a positive second derivative. So let me show you those bits. Here's the parts where the second derivative is negative. Uh -huh. And then here's the ones where it's positive. I want you to keep thinking with me. Okay, sorry, that's so messy, but you get the idea. Okay. What's going on? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so, so there's a few thoughts going around. The first thing I hear is there's a lot of symmetry here, just like with the previous one. Do you remember that? Okay, there's a lot of symmetry. You can see the values. Okay. Well, what are you thinking? Uh, the faster the numbers are changing on the y-axis relative to the x-axis, the bigger the numbers are. If that makes sense. The faster the numbers are changing on the y-axis, the bigger the numbers are yeah. on, on these ones that I've written, the second derivative. Okay, now, let me just say it one more time, and I'm just going to, as I say it, and Shane Babi, I'll come to you next, I want you to look at what we've written here, right? What we're suggesting is, the faster there's change happening here, right, the bigger these numbers seem to be. Do you agree with that? Hmm. Hmm. Shane Babi, did you have a different thought or a similar one? Ah, so you're about, about five minutes ahead of me. I will come to you though, okay? It's fine, it's fine. We are going to go there, okay? Yeah. Let me explain what's going on because we could, we could workshop this idea for a while, right? Is it but, telling you if it graphs a maximum or a minimum? Yes, but that's not, quite, that's not quite what I'm getting to, okay? All right, have a look with me. Have a look with me, okay? I, I'm going to return to Will's point, right? Have a look here. What's happening? And the answer is your function is doing what? It's increasing, right? Do you see it's going up? It's going up. But, but... It's slowing down. Do you see that? It's still increasing, but it's increasing at a slower and slower pace until this point right here. You see that point? Am I increasing or decreasing at this point? At this point right here. Increasing, not increasing. Let me say it one more time. Am I increasing or decreasing at this exact point? And the answer is I'm stationary. You saw that on the first derivative, right? It's a stationary point, right? Because this is the second derivative, right? Now, look, right? At this point, I now start decreasing. Why is that? And the answer is because how's the rate of change changing? The rate of change is zero at this moment, but it's, it's about to come down. The rate of change is decreasing. The rate of change is decreasing here. Let me say that again. The rate of change is decreasing. The rate of change is decreasing here. The rate of change is still decreasing. That's why you turn around. Does that make sense? Mm. I'm going to say it one more time, right? At this point here, which is the one I started with, the function's increasing. Yeah? It's going up. But your rate of change is decreasing. The whole function's slowing down as it approaches this point. It has to slow down because it's going to become stationary. That's what stationary means. You stop moving, right? OK, now what about this point here? This is what I'm really interested in, right? You can see it switches over from blue to red. My rate of change stops changing at this point, which is why if you zoomed in really hard <laughs> like that, okay? If I zoom in like that, and this is the only part of the graph that you can see, this graph doesn't look like a curve anymore, does it? Do you notice this part of the graph just looks like a straight line? It looks like it's not changing at all at that one little moment, okay? But then when I come back out, 
what's going on. Well, the rate of change is now saying, hey, hey, I want you to go up this way now. If you can imagine someone sort of like pulling this thing up, dragging it upwards. And so it's like, oh, fine, okay, okay, I'll turn around. And off it goes. Gets to a stationary point, it's a minimum, as you can see, and it heads up. Now, the language that we use to describe this geometrically is actually what Shane Balvey was getting to, right? What you could say, what you could summarize this as saying is, this blue part of the graph, it has a... Um, it has a concavity. We talk about this word concavity when we talk about parabolas, right? We talk about a concave up parabola or a concave down parabola. See the blue part? It's concave down. You see it's facing downwards? Um, if that was a cup, right? It would be turned upside down, the water's all fallen out. Right? By contrast, this guy here is concave up. If you put water in it, it would hold it up, okay? It would stay there. So we now can come back to what we've written here, right? First derivative. Second derivative, what does each one tell us? The first derivative is the rate of change, right? So this is about gradient. Are you going up or are you going down? The second derivative is this word that Shambhavi was talking about. It's concavity. Are you, are you going up and going down, but are you doing it faster or slower, right? Are you, um, are you slowing down as you approach a stationary point or are you like getting faster and faster or even going off in this direction? Okay, and this is a big new idea. We're going to spend some time dwelling on it today and next week as well. You're ready to make the heading now, which is the second derivative and concavity. These are the two concepts we're exploring today. The second derivative and concavity. Okay. Now, I have just enough space over here on this side. I'll write the questions on the exercise shortly, but... Uh, um, Saran kind of um, anticipated this. We need to know how to write this. I don't really want to write second derivative equals every single time. Um, we have shorthand for writing everything, right? So I'm going to introduce some language that helps you with this. Okay, so if your function is y, then we already know how to write the first derivative. First derivative. Um, I'm going to use this notation here that, I, that we've been using for a while now, dy and dx. Okay. Um, if, by contrast, the function was written as f of x, then we would write its derivative as f dash x, right? Okay. So now I'm going to tell you, show you, how do we write the next derivative? Now, it just so happens that actually starting with this function notation is easier. See that dash? That dash means, hey, that thing, differentiate it, right? So how did we get to the second derivative? What did we do? We differentiated another time, right? So they're like, well, if the first one was f dash, the next one is f dash dash. It's another dash because dash means differentiate it again. If I could do f dash 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 if I wanted, you know, you can differentiate as many times as you like. Over okay, now when it comes to this one, right, I'm going to write it, but it's going to look weird and I'm going to explain why it looks weird in a second, okay? We know it's going to look like a fraction like this, but what does this process look like when you differentiate it again? Um, you don't need to write this bit, you don't need to write this bit, but I do want you to see it. So maybe actually pens out of hands for a second, I want you to watch, right? Um, dy on dx. I can write that as d on dx of y. Do you remember d on dx is what we call the differential operator? It means, hey, the thing you're about to see, differentiate that thing, right? But we kind of like shorthand write that y up the top, that's why the y sort of sneaks up there, okay? Now, what is the second derivative? It's, you, you take this thing and then you differentiate that. So it's not d on dx of y, it's d on dx of, of that thing, right? Hmm. How can we like combine that together in a neater looking way? Have a look at the numerator. You see how there's d and then there's d again? So we have shorthand for that, right? We're like, you did it twice. So I'm going to write that as d squared, right? You take the difference you twice, okay? And then, and then there's that y hanging out on the bottom, okay? Now have a look at the, um, have a look at the denominator. Have a look at the denominator. What do you see on the denominator? There's two dx's. Now, if I wanted to be like, if I wanted to be really pedantically correct, what I would write is, see that dx thing? That happens twice. 
so I square it. But there's this funny interplay between, you know how I keep saying, we've said it many times, mathematicians, famously lazy, right? They're so lazy that in a rare moment of laziness overcoming technical accuracy, instead of writing the second derivative like so, they write it as d squared y over, you can write this in your little table now, dx squared without the brackets. Okay? But what they really mean is you do that dx thing, you do it twice because you differentiated twice to get there. Okay? So this here is the notation, oh sorry, wrong color. This is the notation that we're going to use to indicate the function and whatever derivative it is that you're working with. Okay?